The morning sun brightens up the sky and paints the landscape mosaic with different hues of green. In this light, the dawn chorus of bird song marks the beginning of the hustle and bustle of the day. Male hornbills tend to their nesting mates, while an orange-headed thrush forages on the forest floor. A young Malabar trogon waits patiently for her parents to bring her some breakfast, and a greater racket-tailed drongo perches in the canopy looking for insects. This is what one wakes up to in the Anamalai hills of the Western Ghats. Running parallel to the western coast of India is a mountain range recognized as one of the hottest biodiversity hotspots in the world, the Western Ghats. These ancient peaks are older than the Himalayas and provide refuge for a large portion of the country's wildlife. Nestled in these misty mountains is Valparai, a small hill station where fragmented forests are interspersed amidst a sea of tea plantations. Over the last two decades, the Nature Conservation Foundation has been working to restore degraded forest fragments across the Valparai Plateau. Today, the plateau is composed of different types of forests. Degraded forest fragments, fragments which are being restored, and forests within protected areas which are the least disturbed. While the restoration work has undoubtedly helped to undo some of the degradation, the question remains, how successful has this work been in bringing back the animals which once inhabited these forests? Eavesdropping on the sounds of the forest can tell us about the species that live there and thus the health of the habitat. We at Project Dwani listen to the forests of Valparai by placing audio recorders across the different forest types in order to better understand how the bird diversity has responded to ecological restoration and how the soundscapes of each forest vary from each other. This is one aspect of a field of ecological research termed bioacoustics. What you're listening to here is the intricate soundscape of an undisturbed forest within the Anamalai Tiger Reserve. This is a protected area with contiguous rainforest habitat which harbors a wealth of biodiversity. Some of the plants and animals living here are endemic to these old growth forests, which means that this is their one and only home. The overall soundscape is a complex medley, unlike that of any other forest type in the region. A specialist of interior rainforests, the white-bellied blue flycatcher can sometimes be seen perched just a few feet off the ground under deep shade, the brilliant blue of its feathers hidden from the light. Its high-pitched and wavering song is simultaneously soft and delicate, not drawing attention to itself. If you look carefully, you might just catch a glimpse of one of the jewels of the forest floor, the Asian emerald dove. The green of its wings has a dark metallic sheen which glints in the dappled sunlight. This stunning bird can be seen looking for food between the thick leaf litter, all the while emitting a low, booming grumble. Now let's listen to what a degraded forest sounds like. Here, many natural processes have been interrupted. The canopy tends to be quite open with plenty of light penetrating to the ground level. One can often find invasive plant species such as lantana and other weeds dominating the understories of these habitats. Compared to the rainforests of the Anamalai Tiger Reserve, the amount and variety of wildlife that can be supported here is limited. These types of forests support many species that are typically found in open country habitats, like the chestnut-headed bee-eater, which uses exposed perches to hunt for insects. Bee-eaters are skilled acrobats, performing aerodynamic mid-air maneuvers to catch their fast-moving prey. Some species can take advantage of the dense undergrowth of tea estates, degraded forests, and the edges of different habitats, like rufous babblers. They tend to hang around in groups that forage close to the ground, chattering amongst themselves with their distinctively hoarse, 
high pitched trills they are generally not found inside dense rainforests a restored forest site is cleared of exotic plants and native rainforest saplings are planted here to ensure that some of the damage done by degradation is reversed from the outside restored forests may look superficially similar to degraded ones but as you can hear they sound starkly different from one another here we see a bird community that is much more similar to what one would expect in a healthy undisturbed rainforest one of the most accomplished vocalists in the western ghats is the forest loving hill mynah these birds have loud piercing screeches and almost human like calls at times they tend to sit high up in the canopy where their calls carry long distances somewhat shy despite its stunning colors the orange headed thrush can occasionally be seen foraging through the newly planted saplings in restored forests like many thrushes its shyness does not stop it from performing elaborate songs as we've listened to these different types of forests we found that bird communities seem to recover partially as forests are restored to their earlier state as forests heal from degradation they begin to look and to sound more and more like their pristine counterparts this tells us that there is great value to doing restoration work in a place like valparai growing trees especially to repair damaged forests is a slow process and it's important that we protect existing forests while restoring those which have been degraded what we've also learned is that bioacoustics can be a powerful tool which we can use to assess how effective conservation measures have been in a place this is a field that is growing with multiple other applications and we have much to learn from its use across the world Thank you.